Hey! Hey everybody, how's it going? Dan Schinder here on Yes Shift with... Steven Schinder. We are a father-son podcast about the prog rock band Yes and people involved with Yes. And we have a May birthday bash episode for you with yeah. a little something extra up front, right, Steve? Yeah, so uh, this is kind of like what we did in January with uh, Yes members uh, having birthdays like around the same time. So uh, we're celebrating the birthdays of Bill Bruford, Rick Wakeman, and Jay Shellen. Today, as we're recording this, May 17th is Bill's 73rd birthday, at least in the US. I've, over in the UK, it's technically Rick's birthday now. Um, I believe they were born like a day apart in the same year. Uh, yes, they were. I just double checked. <laughs> I was like 99% sure of that. And Jay Shellen's birthday is on the 20th. Uh, he was born in 1960, so he'll be 62, which is wild because I don't think of him as being like 62 for some reason. I know. Same here because I first knew of Jay when I first started to hang out with Alan at his house and he showed me a World Trade album yeah. and mentioned Billy and I think we're going to be working with this guy and check out this drum. And that was 1989 into 1990. So we're talking 32 years ago, which is, yeah, so I get that. Well, guess what? I don't think of me as very close to Jay's age either. So there you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I'm just seeing if we are on both pages right now. We should be. Um, Steve's going to be checking comments. So whatever we talk about, whatever we comment on, please chime in, answer questions that Steve and I ask each other. This is very organic. We don't plan this out, really. You might be able to tell. Steve actually does a <laughs> lot of planning that keep us on track and keep me on a leash and reeled in. But we don't like saying, okay, you say this, and then I'm going to, it's it's just a natural conversation and we want you to be part of that. So you can be part of that via the comments, whether you're watching this on the Yes Shift page or the Drum Talk TV page. And if you're listening to us after this has been live on anchor.fm slash Yes Shift, thanks so much for tuning in. You can write us, let us know what you think of the show, good, bad, or indifferent. Give us suggestions at Podcast at gmail.com. The dot is always lower case. I can't believe how many people screw that up. <laughs> yeah, so I see we're on Drum Talk TV. Um, I don't know if there's a delay for like Yes Shift. Oh, up, I think but... I accidentally put us only on Drum Talk TV. What a dummy. I'm so, you um, You know why? Because tomorrow, I, we just did an interview yesterday with Marco Miniman, and tomorrow we're doing with Rich Redman. So please share to the Yes Shift page. Yeah, Sorry sure. about that. Hey, Drum I'll Talk TV fans. Right <laughs> what a dummy. Sorry, this is why I can't be in charge of anything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so in, in Sorry, the comments, it, no worries, I'll just share it. Uh, in the comments, just real quick, I see Jim Ho says, how old is Steve now? I assume he means Steve Howe, in which case 75, yeah. And Mark Cole said, I just saw that it's Robert Fripp's birthday. Uh, yeah, that was yesterday. Oh, yes, uh, that's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like we alluded to, uh, there's also another occasion that passed. So two days ago on May 15th was Alan White and his wife Gigi's anniversary, their 40th anniversary, actually. 40 years of marriage for a rock star is to the same person is uh, I've been married 35 years, but not to the same person is is extraordinary. So good for them. Um, like I said, I've known them since 1989, and they're an amazing couple, wonderful people. And this is uh, so cool. So when they met and got together, it was, if I remember right, shortly before the Tormato period. Uh, so we know what Alan was doing. And Gigi was actually a mechanic at Magic Muffler. Oh, wow. Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> you, you gotta stop doing that. I'll just like believe because I, I feel like there's like lots of stories he still haven't told. So I love like, that. That's a sign never. of trust. But there are a lot of stories. Some I, of I really, them I can. I really shouldn't though. 
<laughs> no, you should. You should. <laughs> hey, at least I cop to it and say when I'm joking. So right, yeah, yeah, happy anniversary, Alan and Gigi. Um, that that's really cool. What a great example. Yeah, and Alan also uh, wrote up. Uh, well, he reshared a post from a few years ago that I posted on another one of Bill's birthdays, but I shared it again with a new caption saying. Once again, wishing fellow Yes drummer Bill Bruford a very happy birthday. Cheers, mate. And this is a picture of them at an Earthworks show in Seattle back in 2001. So, yeah, yeah it's really cool that apparently Alan went to see Earthworks. Um, that, that's one of the things that, that I think you and I have wondered sometimes. It's like, what's their friendship, relationship as like, yes drummers kind of like but well i think yeah. as time has gone on we've learned so much more about the roots of that so for instance bill was magnanimous enough to say okay we just finished this album but i'm leaving before the tour but i won't leave unless you find someone so they found someone and then bill even stepped it up again as he revealed on his interview with us recently about a month ago that he gave, was it, did he tell us or was it in the book? Now I don't remember. It's all running together, but Bill gave 50% of his royalties. Oh yeah. That was, to the that was in the book. Yeah. Yeah. To Alan. And that, who does that? You know, who, uh, I'm not giving you any of my royalties from this. So <laughs> no, but I, I think that that that's really neat. And there's no reason for any, animosity it's not like bill got kicked out and then this guy alan moved in on his territory so you know there's i think naturally a lot of people think there's always some rift between past and present or both former musicians from a given band or something and it and sometimes there is yeah sometimes there case, is no. there's a lot of assumption tied with that but in this case it's not so here's a question before we get to the birthday bash yeah alan is such an integral part of yes he's been a constant member you know if we forget the sabbaticals but he's been a constant member he's the only one that hasn't left and come back and left and come back um other than of course chris and he's the longest member now and he's not just the drummer he's played piano on some stuff Going back as far as Tales from Topographic Oceans, he's done vocals, he's written music. He's such a big part of Yes. What if Bill hadn't left Yes? Or what if they got a different drummer? I can't picture Alan doing anything else. And when you look at the music he was doing before Yes, he had played with Joe Cocker, he was with um, John Lennon and Yoko Ono, the Plastic Ono Band, and... George Harrison he did work with, a lot of stuff there that was pretty far removed from what he ended up doing in Yes, in, in many ways, in fundamental ways, probably not. But when you look at all that, like, I wonder where he would have landed and would he have had as successful of a career? Would he have he been in a situation where he would have been given the opportunity to shine and given the latitude to also be a fellow writer and play other instruments and sing and, you know, all these things. And really be a face of the band of wherever he would have ended up. What do you think? I mean, who knows? I know there's no answer to that, but I, I one thing I've never asked Alan that I'd like to, then I'll let you answer. I'd like to ask Alan, did he have other offers at that time? And did other offers come since he joined? Yes. Right. Cause I'm not aware of any other potential offers he might've gotten. I mean, it's like, would the, at that, would the former Beatles have gotten him on more of their solo works, or would he have done more session stuff? Like, it's really hard to say. Um, and in the comments, Sasha John, says yes. <laughs> oh, and in the comments, uh, John Kuhn is that how it's pronounced? Uh, Kuhn, uh, let me take a look. Says 50 yeah. years, Kuhn. Of, okay, Kuhn says 50 years of Alan White, and yes, and um who holds yeah. a job for that long seriously yeah uh what, what's funny is in a recent interview steve howe like i guess he speculated that if bill had stayed 
for topographic oceans, he wouldn't have really been into that sort of stuff. Like, you know, with all the lyrics, be like, out in the city, like all the like weirdness of like probably, that music. <laughs> probably, you know, I don't know. And, and pardon me for my puppy folks. He hears me. He's right outside my office door. He's nine months old. He has no control. A lot like me. I'm 59 and I have no control. So hopefully he'll get his bleep together sooner than I have. But um, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. So with Tails, you know, coming out, I think you're right. Because given the reasons he left, he felt close to the edge. There was nothing left to do. Yeah, and that it was like maybe over the edge at that time. And you know what? He's kind of proved that because as... As far expansively as they went with Tails and as esoteric as they got with Relayer, there's never been another close to the edge. So I think you're right, but I'm going to tell you a secret. I've never told you this. I've never said this before. And maybe I'll do this somehow on Drum Talk TV. About a few months ago, I played... Um, I don't think it was ritual. I think I played the revealing science of God and I played it more in the style of Bill Bruford just to see like what oh, it would wow. feel like and sound like. Yeah. Cause there's a clear difference between their drumming. We've talked about this over and over. There's a clear difference between Bill's drumming and anyone else's drumming. No one sounds like him. And it was interesting. And I kind of thought I could hear them doing this with him. However, I agree with what you're um sort of hypothesizing about his sensibilities about it. But I could hear his drumming on that album if it happened that way. But who knows? You know, it's the butterfly effect. And that was a big butterfly to, to shift which way things go. So these are interesting questions. Maybe someday we'll find out in an alternate state, in an alternate universe. Yeah. And Bill was on those first five albums. It was... Like, I know it was only four years, but it was a really huge evolution. And at the time he joined, he thought, he said this before, he thought he was joining a jazz group called Yes. And then with it, vocals like the Fifth Dimension. And that's yeah. actually a perfect description of the band in the beginnings, you know? Yeah. And uh, um, Mark Cole has had a job for quite a while. He says, I've been teaching drums at the same store for 31 years, and they have the same wallpaper in the bathroom. No, I made that part up. I mean, he does say, love the dog. Mark, go to my personal Facebook page, and all you'll see, other than a few recent Yes Shift posts, you'll see my dog, my dog, my cat, my cat with my dog, my dog and my cat, my garden, the lizard in the garden, the butterfly. That's about all I post. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me take care of something for like five seconds. Uh, yeah, tell absolutely. People, tell and people what your favorite Bill Bruford Yes songs are. Yeah, definitely. Write your favorite Bill Bruford songs. I'm going to spew out a few, a few of mine after I read Jim Ho's um, comment regarding Bill. And yes, well, that was quicker than five seconds. Um, <laughs> he says, if Bill Bruford didn't leave yes, they'd be no. <laughs> Embarrassingly, I'm not familiar with the band members. Steve, how many band members have there been in yes? If you count even and just it's... their one appearance of the band, is it 28? I mean, with like the touring members and forget the touring members just the stuff. actual band members who have recorded that are in the band um i feel like it's maybe like 17 or 18 by this point yeah something like that like almost 20 yeah so it's it's not surprising that oh john kuhn says 19 okay great i'll take your word for it <laughs> that's awesome just like peter kuhn remember peter kuhn steve I think I will once you tell me. <laughs> Peter was the guy from Germany who did all the close-up shots on my cooking show. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Peter Kuhn. Same name. Mark Cole says, I'm still obsessed with Heart of the Sunrise. That's a great one. Heart of the Sunrise. Oh, yeah. um, close to the Edge has to be there for everybody. You, How can that not be a favorite Bill Bruford song with Yes? I mean, I'm sure everybody has it, but another one of mine is Siberian Kutru. Uh, all of the Close to the Edge album. Yeah. So if I were to name five, it'd be those three, Heart of the Sunrise and Long Distance Runaround. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Yeah, those definitely showcase Bill really well. Um, I know there's also like 5% for nothing, but you know. Yeah. Um, at, but as for the earlier stuff, my, my favorites on those, as far as like stuff that features Bill's drumming really well, I would say Yes's cover of Every Days is one of them. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, uh, this one was released like as a B side on a single. Something's coming, like their cover. Oh uh, yeah, was, yeah. I, I know I'm like listing like the covers so far, but um, yeah, there's also great stuff on. Um, um, just to get through the track list like real quick in my America, head, um, since you're on the topic. Oh of yeah, covers. America's a great one. Yeah, but I have to say, I, I I love the live version that Alan has done over the years with a few yeah. different iterations of the band, mainly um, the Open Your Eyes lineup, ladder lineup. That is great by all members. And the synchronicity between Chris and Alan is just, oh my God, it's so kick-ass, it's great. Yeah, and there's also great stuff on like survival, like you go, do, 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 do. like he goes like That's really true. hard. And the song then has like shades of Heart of the Sunrise before yeah. Heart of the Sunrise is a thing. and. Um, I love his solo on Perpetual Change on the Yes Songs version. Ah, you know, yeah. That's on a couple tracks on that, and it sounds really good. Yeah, absolutely. Great stuff by Bill Bruford. I was going to hold up his biography, but I think it's already with my stuff for our trip. So we're not going to do any episodes, well, other than tomorrow with Billy Sherwood. Oh, ooh, yeah. was I supposed to say that? Oh, we, we've already announced it. Oh, so tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern, U.S. Times, we're going to have Billy Sherwood as our guest. Very excited about that. But I was going to say, um, we're going on vacation, my wife and I, from Friday till pretty much through June 1st. But on Trump Talk TV, I will be doing a Bonzo birthday party thing, and I'll play a whole bunch of Zeppelin. Other than that, we're going away. We're going to be tucked away somewhere in an RV, and I'm taking two books. One of them is Bill's biography i want to finish that it's fascinating get bill bruford's biography even if you're not a drummer even if you don't know who bill is if you love biographies and sort of like big stories unfolding and if you're a musician you will love this it is so good yeah and mark cole uh mentions close to the edge. oh south side That's of the sky yeah, and Astral Traveler, Roundabout, Every Little Thing, another cover there. Oh, my God, um, yeah. But, yeah, and, like, exploring um, um, Bill's, like, discography because of, like, what was on his box and seeing, like, how much of that that's spanned. You know, he's done King Crimson, UK, and a lot, a lot of Earthworks. And going into that, like, some of it for the first time in a while for me, it was, like, so great it's like so different from yes you know there's definitely more you know earthworks is full-on jazz and it's like so him and it's and, and really cool going through that huge chunk of his career and those two albums he did with patrick moraz those two albums which is drums and piano are great and then of course the whole king crimson thing and all of that but jim ho has a couple of questions well yeah one is uh Man, I wish I had the book. Do you have your book handy? He's asking, was uh, Bill Bruford yeah, in drum corps? Hold up the picture of... Uh, uh, oh, Steve got away. <laughs> There's a picture of him... Yeah, holding up the book right yeah. now. Yeah, so open up to the page where he's like 12 or 13 in drum corps. He's got the marching drum. And he looks just like oh, Bill Bruford, coincidentally. This one? Yeah, There's Bill yeah. in drum corps, absolutely. And he's... Jim Ho is asked... Oh, also asking if Steve Schinder plays drums. No, no but I'm going to hold up question. the... Yeah, what? I said no, next question. Next. <laughs> the, what he does play is this instrument right here. Steve's a writer. Yeah. He plays I, the I, keyboard. Different yeah, keyboard. the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, um, you know, Bill is very... You know, he's very authentic. Like, he, he's been honest about how, like, ABWH folding into Union was, like, he was really pear disappointed with the that. the way he said it. Yeah. And, and the whole thing went pear-shaped at that point, yeah. 
Yeah, some would say onion shaped. Um, but <laughs> yeah, w when it came to touring with Alan, he was basically like working around Alan because he thought, okay, Alan is the yes drummer. I'll just work er off of you. And, uh, you know, it just made sense. And yeah, because there's um, songs that Bill had had hadn't played since that album's tour. You know, like anything from Fragile, he didn't play yeah. since that tour because he didn't tour the Close to the Edge. So stuff like Long Distance Run Around the Fish, they both played Long Distance Run Around, but then Bill left the stage and let Alan carry on with Chris for the fish because that was like their thing, White Fish. Yeah, and like for a long time, it felt to me like, you know, Bill has moved like far beyond Yes, you know, it's far in the rear view mirror, which was even more surprising to me when... He did, in fact, go to the like Hall of Fame induction. Um, he didn't get to speak there, unfortunately, but he did get to do the introductory speech in front of the band's two concerts in London on their 50th anniversary tour. Um, that is so cool. He's just a great guy. But the other thing I remember someone pointing out, he was the only original member on the stage. Oh, yeah, he, he pointed that out. And oh, he like, did, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and people were like laughing, and he like looked around. Like, yeah. Yeah. And he was also at the unveiling of a plaque at the location of wherever Yes rehearsed before their first gig. Um, like he went to like the 50th anniversary of that and talked for like a good half hour. You, you know what all that means is he has not lost. It's not that far back in his rearview mirror in, in the regard of he hasn't lost track of what that has meant to the rest of his life. You know, you could yeah. tell he reveres it. He cherishes it. That's where he became affordable, a formidable, affordable. He was affordable then. Now he's not a formidable musician in a space that was really unfolding with prog rock coming out of psychedelia and everything like that. But then to branch out on his own, like you said, with Earthworks, and then get with Robert Fripp and do all that stuff. It's he's just had a wonderful career. I, I really admire yeah. his path and the way he's dealt with everything is just great. Yeah. So since we're 20 minutes in, maybe we should like transition to Rick Wakeman. Um, so Absolutely. One of my absolute, absolute most favorite musicians, this guy. I just love this man in every way you could think of. He's funny. He's had a cooking show. I had a cooking show. He's a musician. I'm kind of a music. No, but seriously, he's hosted game shows as well. Um, and his music is just tremendous. I've heard people say he sucks. What does that no, even really. mean in their mind? You don't like it, so he sucks? How can you say someone like that sucks? He's just a tremendous composer and musician. Yeah, and I was thinking about this just before we hopped on to record, but other than Yes, like the only other bands that Rick has worked with really, like or at least I'm aware of, like, right before was Straubs, and then, uh, you know, he was with Yes, like, you know, in and out of the band over the decades, and had ABWH was in, he was in that briefly, but other than that, he wasn't really in any other band, so it makes me wonder if, like, there were many bands that tried to get him in, like, once he was, like, out of Yes at some point, like, I know he was considered for the super group that ended up becoming Asia. But other than that, like, I wonder if he got any offers. Uh, I, but in any case, it's pretty clear to me that, like, he never needed to... Well, I know he had, like, financial troubles, like, especially throughout the 80s, but... That happens uh, when I you get divorced a few times. Yeah, well, there are, like, other things going on. Yeah. But we won't go into that. But, uh, you know, he had, like, such a prolific solo career lots of stuff going on with that so he it probably felt like nice breaks from being in a band you know absolutely and for those who don't know he did a ton of wonderful session work before he was in yes with a couple landmark artists and landmark songs yeah. david that's bowie. rick playing the mellotron in space oddity by david bowie and he did some other work with David, and they were very close. Rick was one of the very few people that knew that David was sick. They were that close. And he also played on Black Sabbath's um, Volume 4, right? I'm not sure which one. Or was it, it was Masters played. of Reality? Um, I don't know. 
but it was one of those two rick is on i now i don't remember it's one of those two uh but obviously right. a very versatile player but you raise a great question were people clamoring at him the first of many times he left yes yeah and he's made many connections obviously like you mentioned you know he's worked with ozzy ozzy has guested on his return to the center of the earth album and you know he's just met lots of people and he's probably made more solo albums than any yes member and it's just yeah he's had a very solid solo career for decades yeah and to the point where i'm like am i ever gonna like get through all of them like i don't know there's just like so many (laughs) so how far are you are you doing it chronologically or just well i've i think i tried a bit of that like 13 or 14 years ago or something but obviously he's put out more since then so it's like uh, I'd have to like look at the list and be like, okay, which ones have I listened to? Which ones haven't I? Cause I'm sure there are some I didn't have access to like at the time, but yeah, I, I know I lot. haven't even heard all of them and I'm a huge fan. Right. But he's done a lot. You know, he loves doing things that are inspired by literature or history. He's done like keep like lots of like, really big proggy keyboard stuff but he's also done like piano stuff and a couple christmas he worked things. with shaka khan yeah and, oh, that was in uh, the 80s i believe early 80s okay and you know stuff that sounds like really spacey um and you know just no end in sight really um he's working on a another solo album this summer and i'm again like when that comes out i'm gonna check it out definitely yeah. Folks, and, do you have a favorite work by Rick Wakeman in Yes and or outside of Yes? What is that for you, Steve? I The first thing that comes to mind when I think Rick Wakeman is Awaken, I guess it helps that it almost sounds like his name, but, you know, it just how it begins with the... <laughs> the anagram. And, you know, I've the loved runs. seeing him perform yeah. it with yes and the live recordings i've heard and seeing him play with arw like that was really cool right how about outside of yes and folks answer Um, these questions too so outside of yes well i guess there's the meeting on abwh but from his solo stuff there's you know, we've talked about, I think it was Anne Boleyn on Six Wives of Henry VIII. And there's like some great stuff on his 70s solo albums. Um, there's probably stuff from like his solo stuff in later decades. That's just... My, mine's a clear mind. cut no brainer. Like I don't even have to think about it. And I don't know if this counts because it's not an album. It's it's a live concert. Oh, gonna, I know which. Yeah, you've you mentioned do. this before. <laughs> live at Hampton Court is fucking amazing you got the orchestra you got the choir you got his band and it's at hampton court it's six wives of henry the eighth all the way through at hampton court narration between each piece i love that so much i love that with yes well Oh, the revealing science of God is my favorite that he's done with yes. Okay, now I was, I was cause I was gonna say that's like my favorite one all time album, Tales from Topographic Ocean. So how is that not my favorite work by him? It's it's tied that and close to the edge. But I okay. remember I remember hearing him for the first time, knowingly hearing him for the first time. It's when an older cousin, when I was about ten, played me the fragile album. And that solo in Roundabout just was like, well, first of all, it's a great sound. You can hear the Hammond keys popping, the percussiveness of that, and just the the groove, that offbeat, the bills, but just everything about it was, what the hell is this? <laughs> and he, everything I've ever heard has just gotten better and better from that. But I'd, I'd have to say that in Yes, it's close to the edge in Tales. Outside is live at Hampton Court, Six Wives, Henry VIII. Yeah, and he even shines on future times on Tormato. Like I yeah. love Oh yeah. And... Yeah. Yeah, and um in the comments uh, John uh, says um this is the John we mentioned earlier says the Red Planet is a very good album. Yeah, you know, I'm not I don't sure think if I've, I've heard that. To that one. Um What's I think that, that one... I... 
I didn't hear what you said. I said I'm not sure if I've heard that one. Yeah, I know I haven't. That's interesting. Uh, okay, that came out in 2020, so pretty recent. Yeah, and Jim Ho is asking if they all have uh, formal training. Oh, it's his last album. Um, they all, I believe, except for John Anderson, the original singer, I believe they all have formal training in music. Um, all the obvious ones do. Uh, Banks, I'm not sure, the original guitar player. But I know that Tony K, Rick Wakeman, Pat Mraz, yeah. um, Jeff Downs, Igor, that's five keyboard players so far. Oliver, yes, that's six. Did I miss anyone on keys? I think that's all the keyboard players. Um, definitely Steve Howe, definitely Chris Squire, who also sang in choir, was a choir boy. Uh, Trevor Rabin, absolutely. Um, Alan and Bill, both. Um, Alan, proficient in piano. Patrick, definitely. Patrick Mraz. I'm just thinking through the roster of all these people. Jay Shellen, I don't know, but I'm guessing so. Uh, Billy Sherwood, for sure. Yeah. Um, John Davison, I, I, yes, I believe so. Um, Benoit, I'm not sure. Benoit David. Trying to think of Eddie Jobson. And Francis Monkman, I think so. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, pretty much yes, Jim. Absolutely. Cool. Right. I want to check out the Red Planet. I remember now hearing that that was really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely want to check that out at some point as well. So Cool. Um, Chime in on, on the Rick question, folks. And there's a delay, Steve, so it might come in you know, while we're talking about Jay. So we'll watch the comments. Okay. So should we transition into Jay then? Yes. Or... Okay. So Jay it, is someone I was more familiar with as like knowing like that he's like been in the background and stuff. Uh, apparently he's been in, you know, he's been involved with these yes band members longer than I realized like recently i found out like several months ago i think i heard in a tony k interview that jay was a member of bad finger for a time in the early 80s like back when jay was a teenager or maybe it was around 20 or something really but, yeah so he knew tony back then and then um you know years later he was involved with billy with world trade um, was he in he was circa after alan left yeah, he was. Uh, after, uh, I believe he was on the second album because Alan was on the first. So, um, and I, I'm sure he's, oh, he, he was on some conspiracy stuff as well. So, you know, he and Billy have really right. tied. I think he was even in Asia at some point during the John Payne era. That's right. Band. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. And he's been in like some other things I'm not familiar with, like Hurricanes and Unruly Child, but. As far as the stuff I'm more familiar with, it's very clear that he's had like all, it's all about the connections, right? Like knowing all these people and sort of getting his foot in the door. Um, the way that he got involved with Yes was kind of unintentional at first. Like, you know, Alan was having a back problem, so they needed someone to like aid him or sub for him on the topographic drama tour. And it was gonna be Dylan Howe, but he had visa problems uh, at that time, so they got Jay, and Jay was on that tour, and then they got Dylan for the next one, but then after that, they reverted back to Jay, and it's been him, like, he's been working with them since then, even, like, doing some stuff on the quest. Yeah, and, and I do want to point out for, you know, Jay's sake that even though the connections and who you know has a lot to do with it, you still have to bring it. You still have to bring it. And Jay's a great drummer. For someone yeah. who has played basically everything from Fragile forward, everything except the Quest, haven't gotten there yet. I've played everything over and over and over and over for decades. Fragile, Close to the Edge, Tales from Topographic Oceans, Relayer, everything. And I know that music inside out. I could step in and do it. I really could. So I know 
that music so well. And, and that's why I'm, I'm very comfortable giving Jay the nod that you still have to bring it. And when I use these words, I hope they come across right. If Yes does continue on beyond Alan continuing on, Jay's the heir apparent, but that doesn't mean it's just being handed to him. He's earned it. He knows the music. He's absolutely good enough. And, and that's what matters most. Yeah, I've seen Jay at th- like perform with Yes at three different shows on the topographic drama one, on the Yes 51, and the Royal Affair tour. And he's brought his A game all of those times I've seen him, and he's really into it. Um, and he seems really happy to be there, even when he's just like doing percussion on something like Onward. It's like he's sure, really, like, I don't know if, um, maybe Dylan thought, okay, touring with dad was fun, but I don't want to do be in yes long term. And, and we do know that Dylan's really into jazz and he's got his own combo right. and everything. Yeah. yeah, whereas with Jay, it's, you know, he's uh, more keen on working with them long term and yeah. he's more comfortable with that, I guess. Um, I have to admit, I'm happily envious. Envy's not <laughs> a healthy emotion, but I'm I'm treating it positively. I'm envious and I'm I'm cheering him on. And I think it's cool. I mean, I'd be happy going on stage and just playing triangle for and you and I. Right. You know, I, I've played, you know, I've been on stage playing with Foghat, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And Jay, um, like, uh, I'm glad that he gets, well, okay, so a couple things. On the posters, I do wish that they would include his name along with the other band members, like, at the top. Because, you know, he is in the photos, but he... You know, he very much is a part of the band by this point. He's been it's, with them for like six years now. Yeah, and it's kind of also like um, to maybe a different degree, and maybe what I'm going to say is even more so to what you're saying. The shirt we have where it's Steve Howe, Alan White, and Chris Squire with, and then it lists Oliver and what? which one and is Benoit. that? Benoit. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was the in the present tour. That that was back when they were hesitant to just market themselves as just yes at that time. Which is weird, yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> but but I am glad that the Gottlieb brothers give Jay like a good coverage and stuff like the Yes Fifty tour book and the Quest yeah. Blu-ray art book. So, uh, like, I think you're right. It's very clear that. He's like, if yes, uh, continues going on for a few more years or several more years. And if Alan retires by then, which seems likely to me, um, and I don't know like anything for sure. This is all speculation, but I think it is to me, it feels very much like Jay is the heir apparent. Like he'll be Alan's successor if like when or, or if they cross that bridge you know like right. maybe they're just living in the moment for now but i'm sure that notion has crossed their minds oh yeah point. absolutely yeah, yeah. cool and, and and um I, i'd like to hear more of him on the next album that they're apparently working on like uh, i know that he did percussion on the quest uh, according to the credits um i would like for and for all we know, maybe he did more than they let on, but it'd be nice for the work to be more divided and, you know, do like a making of video for the album. Cause that's something I kind of wish they had for the quest. Cause I'm really curious, like what that process looked like firsthand. Yeah. And you and I love that stuff. Yeah. I love that additional piece that came with uh, the original deluxe version of fly from here where it has the DVD that includes exactly that, the making yeah. of Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, John says definitely earned, and Brian Cahoon says hello, gentlemen. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Brian. Right. So, uh, do you, and um, I don't know if you have anything else to say about these guys before we close up, but I just want to give like a quick 
like tip of the hat to a couple other guys. Um, so uh, Go ahead. they were they were never official members, but their birthdays are coming up in like uh, the next few days to the next couple of weeks. So, Is it Eddie Jobson again? Uh, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, so Jimmy Hahn's birthday, I believe, is in like sometime later this month uh, on the 24th. Yeah. And he was and, in World Trade and he played in ABWH as a support musician on tour and he's on a bit of Union. Uh, no, he wasn't on the ABWH tour. He was oh. only on Union. Who am I thinking of? Uh, they had Milton McDonald do rhythm guitar on the ABWH tour. Oh, wow. Why was I thinking? Sorry. Yeah. So Jimmy <laughs> Hahn, uh, and I, I know like Union is like people like didn't like the whole like piece together from like sessions and stuff, but you know, he got the job done and he's a talented guitarist in his own right. And Tony Levin, whose birthday is on June 6th. Uh, might as well mention him too. Like he was a heavily... monster of a musician. He's yeah. let me. Can I chime in on Tony? Yeah. Okay. First of all, he's also Jewish, and he's been on every single one of Peter Gabriel's solo albums since Peter left Genesis back in '74. He's been on every tour. He's done amazing work with King Crimson. My still my favorite King Crimson album and tour concert video is three of a perfect pair in Tokyo. That is so good. And, and Tony is just such a great player. Another brilliant concert film that features Tony is, um, wait, it's, uh, <laughs> is it a King Crimson? Album no, it's or? Peter oh, with his uh, daughter gr growing up live, growing up live, grow, watch it folks, look it up tonight today, in the morning, this morning, this afternoon, at noon, whatever. Watch Growing Up Live. Tony is so good. He's so good. And Peter's daughter is great, and she looks just like him. Uh, but that's a whole other tangent. I don't want to get too tangential, but right. great um, musician. Great yeah, musician. And John says Levin Torn White is an amazing album. I'm That's not sure right. if I've listened to that one. Uh, I think I've heard one song. I feel guilty saying that. Uh, yeah, it's definitely one that we need to listen to. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't yeah. listen to the rest because that one song sucked. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I know that the label session musician, you know, kind of sounds minimal. But these guys, you know, Jimmy right. and Tony, they, they do like such great work you know jimmy and circa tony and king crimson and lots of other like they've each done lots of things and yeah you know but, but tony was talented. a member of king crimson like a solid member yeah 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 and, yeah. and peter's band and uh i so when i saw abwh i didn't get to see tony he had hepatitis right so jeff berlin stepped in for some dates which makes sense because he had played with bill and earthworks and whatnot so that made sense yeah um so yeah again uh very thankful for the contributions of all these musicians and if they put out more stuff i'm definitely gonna listen to what i can definitely i i, I haven't been watching the calendar but it seems like every 10 years peter gabriel puts something new out so i'm hoping that happens soon hope Hope we're revolving around the sun close to that time because I'd love Peter and I'd love to hear Tony and see them. Yeah, definitely. Um, so was there anything else you, are we wrapping up? Like, Yeah, you, I think we're you, good. You, okay, yeah, you can yeah. tell how well we planned this. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll bring up their photos again. So happy birthday to the boys. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Um, thanks for all the wonderful years of wonderful music to everybody. If you haven't seen Bill Bruford on our show, check that out. Uh, if you're listening to us on anchor.fm slash yes shift, it's in the library. If you're watching us on Facebook dot com slash yes shift, go to the video library and we repost this stuff from time to time. And it's on drum talk TV as well. We broadcasted that we saw it's the only drum talk TV uh, interview that, well, I guess this one too, 
that Steve joined me for that specific interview. Usually Steve's behind the scenes, the associate producer makes sure everything runs the way it's supposed to run. But being that Bill also fit into our Yes Shift program, Steve joined me and we both interviewed him and Bill was great. So check that out. We've had Oliver Wakeman on, as we mentioned, we have some other feelers out there for some other people. And Wednesday, the 18th, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, Billy Sherwood joins us, the man who's worn more hats than any other Yes member. More hats in Yes. Um, So I'm eager to talk to him about that. And we've both known Billy for years. So that'll be fun. Yeah. And um, you can email us at yesshiftpodcast at gmail.com. Give us feedback or suggestions, and we might read some of it on the show. Absolutely. Um, Thanks, yeah. guys. Appreciate the applause. Thanks, John. Thanks, everybody, for following what we do here on Yes Shift and Drum Talk TV. And um, we're going to let our original intro to this song play out while we just sit here for a moment. Uh, Because lately, Facebook's been cutting off the end of the live. So this will give us a little bit of a buffer. We'll see you tomorrow on the Yes Shift page and Drum Talk TV. Yeah, it was kind of fitting here, though, because we were talking about two drummers. Absolutely. We still got to have that contest. See how many people can name. But they'll, well, yeah, even if they play it back, that'd still be a fun contest and give some away. We'll do that. See you folks. <laughs>